one total domination of one major American city. Is that too much to ask for? Is it? Is it? Huh? Let the peace and love special shine a light on me. Let the peace and love special shine a light on me. Let the peace and love special shine a light on me. Let the peace and love special. Shine a goddamn motherfucking light on me. Yeah. Hey, hey, how are you? Welcome again to the Peace and Love Special. I am recording this on a day that's super windy. You might hear a little bit of banging in the background. And what the fuck is that? Birds? Hmm. Probably could have recorded this on a day where it wasn't so windy, but shut up. So today is one of possibly many kids movies from the 90s that I'm going to review that have not aged well and that I did not end up liking very much. <laughs> um, so I hope that you guys enjoy this review. I will try to make it fun and interesting. I'm yapping again, and I'm just carrying on. Let's get this shit started. Let's get this shit started! We begin in... Yeah, there. Some shitty looking dudes are burning down a village looking for a sacred medallion. However, the locals ain't snitching. Damn, pretty exciting start. An old geezer hightails into a misty cave to hide. The fuck is that? Why does that ancient statue look like a Muppet? The old man is followed by a ninja lady. Ooh, a hot ninja lady. <laughs> it should have been me, not him. She has zero problems finding the medallion. We then get introduced to the best character in the film. Kogashuko is the main antagonist, played by the T-1000 himself, Robert Patrick. He goes on and on about some boring ass story involving a king and two sons, I don't know. Thankfully it's interrupted by an earthquake aftershock. Those happen a lot in the future. His minions are so stupid that they didn't realize an artifact called the double dragon would contain two pieces. I'm pretty sure he's told that boring ass story a million times already. Hey birds, shut the fuck up. We meet our heroes, Billy and Jimmy Lee. They're competing in a martial arts tournament, but Billy blows the wind because he plays around too much. Jimmy tries to fix everything, but the tournament turns into a Travis Scott concert. Next up, we get the only redeeming part of this movie, the world building. You see, New Angeles is an even bigger shithole than Los Angeles after a massive earthquake turned everything into Wish.com Mad Max. The only thing keeping a sense of peace in the city is a truce between the cops and the street gangs. Billy and Jimmy, along with their auntie, try to get home without running into gangs. Instead, they run into shitty acting. Good evening, gentlemen. May I see some identification? 50 bucks, man. We accept all major credit cards, including American Express. You got a problem with that? There's a very long and very boring chase scene, but eventually the Lee boys are saved by the power core. This is Marion. She's the strong female lead in... Ooh, wee. Oh, right. Marion and the Power Corps work hard to protect the city from the street gangs. However, the cops think that the Power Corps are also part of the problem. More on that later. Auntie tells the Lee boys that she has the other Double Dragon Medallion, and that it must be protected at all costs because it's... powerful? I don't know. Anyways, Shuko meets up with Obobo, one of the goons we met earlier. Shuko is rather perturbed that Obobo had the chance to get Auntie's medallion, but botched that. Shugo decides to put a bobo on the juice and sends him back onto the streets. The next morning, we see Marion at home having breakfast with her dad and little brother. <laughs> Look, I love the world building, but you guys either got lazy there or that's the most awkward product placement ever. Marion's dad is the chief of police and doesn't realize that his own daughter is the leader of the Power Corps. As a result, he inadvertently talks all kinds of shit about the Power Corps in front of her. I am already getting sick of saying Power Corps. 
I'm sick of the fucking wind. I'm sick of these birds. I can't, I can't speak. I'm just, I'm just so fucking, I'm just so sick of everything right now. Marion tries to talk some sit. What, what the fuck? Marion tries to talk some sense into her dad, but he ain't trying to hear that shit. Shuko ends up finding the Lee boys and auntie to try to scoop the medallion. Shuko's goons go after the Lee boys while he and the hot ninja lady take care of auntie. We get some martial arts action, some home alone bullshit, including a roided out abobo gassing out while in pursuit of the Lee boys. Shuko uses his medallion powers to inhabit the body of Auntie to trick Billy and Jimmy. Shuko burns down their home and Auntie doesn't make it out alive. Rest in peace. <laughs> By the way, this whole scene was very long and very boring. Shuko tells the hot ninja lady to set up a meeting with all the street gangs so he can rip off the beginning of the warriors. Shuko tells all the gangs that he's now the shot caller and the king of New Angeles, and they are just down with that, I guess. <laughs> Meanwhile, Billy and Jimmy mourn the loss of their auntie and try to figure out their next move. All they want to do is try to make it through the streets alive, but unfortunately, they're wanted by every gang in the city. The, 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 the Warriors. It's fucking, it's the Warriors. There's even a fucking mailman gang. Ugh. The Lee boys get ambushed but escape by boat. Well, uh, there's a jet ski gang too. At least we get some cool matte paintings. Finally, the scene ends with explosions. Shuko is super pissed that he still does not have the other medallion and resorts to calling the police. At the same time, Billy and Jimmy seek help from the power core. Marion helps Billy and Jimmy... Jimmy? <laughs> Marion helps Billy and Jimmy... S J oh my god, dude. Marion helps Billy and Jimmy sneak into Shuko's headquarters, which looks like a Vaporwave album cover come to life. Fuck yeah. This. This is the aesthetic. The power core created their version in the lobby while Billy, Jimmy, and Marion sneak into the back. Well, this is age well. that I have loaded Abobo's gang net link with false information. So it seems like the maniacs are getting an unfair share of the profit. Once I download this, it should start a gang mutiny. That is the plan. It's a bad plan. That's actually a good plan. By the way, Shuko is so gangster that his books show him funding organized crime. Shuko tries to bribe Marion's dad to gain more power in the city. While this is happening, we get some more Home Alone bullshit from my heroes. The hot ninja lady puts a stop to that with attempted murder. Our heroes escape with Shuko in pursuit, and while that's happening, Marion's dad and the hot ninja lady go one on one. We get two very boring fight scenes, ending with Billy and Jimmy getting separated. The streets get hot since Shuko's attempted bribery and Marion's plan end the truce between the cops and the gangs. It's at this point that I almost gave up. But there was less than half an hour left in the movie, so I uh, decided to stick with it. Please subscribe. The chief wants to split some cabbage, but the rest of the cops don't want none. So the chief goes out alone. Shuko tries to get some info out of Jimmy, and at the same time, Billy and Marion get close. Unfortunately, they're interrupted by like the every damn gang in the city. We get some martial arts action, more home alone bullshit, and Billy falls for that fucking Shuko disguise gag for like the millionth time. Shuko tries to get Billy to fork over the other medallion. This, uh, I don't know, awakens the power of the medallion or some shit. Billy beats Shuko out of his brother, not a euphemism, but he loses the medallion in the process. This helps Shuko gain the power of the double dragon. Shugo then turns into two evil dark warriors and we get a mix of martial arts action and home alone bullshit. Eventually the Lee boys get the upper hand and now they have the power of the double dragon. Uh, yeah, well, the, those are outfits. <laughs> we end on some more home alone bullshit and Shuko gets arrested. <sighs> and that was double dragon. Oh, what a crap film. Double Dragon was based off of the video game of the same name. The original Double Dragon was released into arcades in the year 1987 by Technos Japan. It was originally developed as a part of the Kunio-kun series of games created by Yoshihisa Kishimoto. 
The Kunio Kun series is best known in the West for the game River City Ransom on the NES. The arcade cabinet actually appears in the film in this blink or you'll miss it moment. Do you see it? Interestingly, this movie that was based off of a video game had a video game release based off of it. Double Dragon, great title, was released for the Neo Geo less than a year later. It features characters and designs based off the movie. It received mixed reviews from critics. The movie takes place in the aftermath of an earthquake that destroyed much of Southern California. This premise is based on a hypothetical real event called the Big One. The Big One refers to a seismic event that could potentially occur along the San Andreas Fault. The result would be an enormous earthquake that could register as greater than a 7 on the moment magnitude scale. This same hypothetical event was also used as the background for other films released during the 1990s. Y'all, this movie is the absolute definition of rosy retrospection, or rose-colored glasses. I remember seeing it for the first time on VHS with my homie during a sleepover, and I thought it was great. But, this just does not age well. I, I do love the production design and the 90s futurist aesthetic. This was at a crossroads between sleek 90s tech and cyberpunk grittiness, and I think it's amazing. However, the acting in the dialogue is mad cheesy and corny and it suffers from the same thing that other kids movies from this era suffered from. Home Aloneism. All kid movies from this era ripped off the worst aspects of Home Alone, like the slapsticky bullshit. Even Home Alone 2 suffered from this. If you're curious and you want to check this out for yourself, it's usually on Amazon Prime. Don't say it in worry though. Peace. Thank you.